Hey folks, it's Nate. Thanks for joining me at the art table again today. I want to talk about something that is a big part of storytelling that a lot of people dance around but don't really address, and that is prose. For the purposes of this discussion, I mean prose to be the word choices and grammar and phraseology you use to convey your story, not necessarily a document that is strictly text, which is what people usually mean when they say prose. They usually use that as a differentiation from poetry or some other form of written work. I'm using it just to refer to language and the way we use it in storytelling, both in dialogue and in description if you are writing plain text or if you are writing a script that describes the world. A lot of theatrical scripts are written as a work of literature as well, and in that your prose can also be important. This is how you really convey your meaning to your audience. It's very important that you be deft and skillful in the use of your prose or you are going to confuse and ultimately lose your audience in the way you speak to them. What do I mean by that? Well, let's take an example. If you are writing a story and you use the word vanity in it to mean not a person who is very proud, who is very self-confident to the point of overbearingness, uh, you, you instead use it to mean futility or worthlessness as you might have in the 15 or 1600s, in the King James Version, if you will. You stand a good chance of losing your audience because nobody uses the word that way anymore. It is now used to refer to the sin of pride, the tendency to think of yourself more highly than you should. Vanity no longer means simple futility. Now, vanity as it is now used is probably a pretty vain emotion in the sense that it is very futile because if you think more of yourself than you should, you are probably not going to be able to actually accomplish what you think you should. So it's true that you can use the word that way, but I don't think you should because people are going to hear it and they're not going to understand exactly what you mean. They may get it eventually through context if you're using it a lot. And if you are, say, writing a story that is set in the late medieval or early Renaissance period where that kind of language was common, it may make sense to give some words those kind of archaic meanings. That said, I still don't think you should do it. You should try and keep the language you are using fairly familiar to your audience. This kind of prose is what makes it possible for them to immediately and effortlessly engage with your story. Now, if that kind of language is a vital part of the story you are telling, if it is an integral part of your story to include, say, word riddles, then you might choose to use vanity in this archaic sense. However, in general, you are going to be creating confusion in your readers if you misuse words this way. It's important to remember that storytelling is part creativity and part communication. Creativity is making something that did not exist before, but communication is sharing an idea and a concept with another. So if you are creating a story, which is a sequence of events and characters, likely fictional, that do not exist, the communication of those things to other people is of vital importance. Prose is your primary method of communication in every medium. Even if you're writing a movie script, well, movies are a visual medium, that's true. However, the people who are transferring the ideas from your head to a visible medium are going to need that script as a reference. Even if you're the writer and the director at the same time, you're going to be sharing that script with a whole bunch of other people. Your visual effects department, your costume department, your prop department, your directors of photography, your stunt choreographers, what have you. There are dozens of people. And that's before we even talk about the actors and actresses who are going to be portraying your characters. All of these people need to be able to comprehend the prose you write to understand your story. So clarity in word choice is very important. Clarity in concept is also very important. If you are going to be tackling concepts that 
the ordinary public is not used to dealing with, it may be better to create your own language to discuss these things than to use the kind of technical jargon that is often used inside professional circles. A great example of this is any time travel story tends to create a series of terms to talk about time travel and paradoxes and all the mechanics that are not the mathematical terms or the conceptual terms you would see in a physics textbook that talks about these same things. That is because those are very dry, very wordy, very easily forgettable terms in many cases. Not all of them, but often. And you really want to make sure you do not have that kind of easy to confuse and easy to forget language being thrown at people who just aren't used to dealing with it. So you have characters who might say reset the day as an edge of tomorrow instead of saying time travel or reset the time loop or something like that. Now in Doctor Who, you may have language like that because it is a show that expects a certain investment from its viewers and very frequently deals with these concepts. And that's a whole nother ball of wax that really deserves its own video. So I'm not gonna delve too deep into that. The important thing is to establish a set of pros that you can work with that allows your audience to understand the concepts you are getting at and attach them to something they can easily remember rather than allow them to discuss the actual topics in deep technical detail afterwards. That is the importance of pros in dealing with concepts. The third thing to remember when dealing with pros is you have to be careful of setting up contradictory pros. Now, the example we explored at the beginning with the word vanity, its modern versus its archaic usage, is kind of an example of contradictory prose. However, it's more a case of using words in obscure and unintuitive ways to the modern listener. Contradictory prose is where you take words or phrases that have a meaning that is generally accepted and you try and assign them a new meaning. You might try and do that for any number of reasons. Maybe you just think your meaning fits better. Maybe it is something you did accidentally. You weren't even thinking that there was this other meaning to the phrase and you discover it accidentally. Now, that might be okay because if you didn't know it, what are the odds your audience is gonna know it? And that is, I'm not saying that facetiously or rhetorically, that is something you actually have to investigate. How likely is your audience to actually assign this other meaning to it? This is an area that kind of walks the line between what we're discussing here and conceptual prose. After all, I did just say you should try and avoid very technical prose that people are going to forget easily. However, what I mean by this is if you have a phrase like best two out of three, and that refers in the common conception to, you know, you need to win two games out of three you don't then try and use it regularly in your story to refer to two people in a group of three who are acceptable to you with the third one not being acceptable for whatever reason. You know, maybe they're too slow. Maybe they're too fat. Maybe they don't look good enough. You know, whatever reasons you might find, don't try and use a common phrase in that way because that is something your audience is just going to push back on they are going to find that it takes them out of the story every time they read this word or phrase and have to remember that it has a totally different meaning in your prose. That is a bad thing to do. And it is very tempting, I find, for a lot of authors, especially when they are just getting started, to think, well, people will figure this out through context clues and they'll see that it has a different meaning and they'll just accept that and roll with it. Sometimes they will, often they won't. People tend to object to having their language messed with in that way. And a lot of times they'll see that you're doing this for a little bit and they'll just say, I don't wanna read this anymore. I, I can't really keep up with what this guy's trying to do. It seems silly to me. And then your audience is out and you don't want that. You don't want that at all. So avoid prose that confuses concepts or confuses themes in that kind of a way. And this is admittedly something you can bend, much like in the case of using archaic language, 
when you are dealing with word riddles or something like that, you can bend concepts when you're trying to illuminate something or you are trying to make the audience think about a concept in a different way. I actually did this as I was writing my latest fiction project, Burning Bright. I actually took the word demonize and changed it from just demagoguery, where you condemn someone mindlessly, to a specific religious practice in the world the characters are a part of. Because while it is bad to mindlessly demonize something, the process of condemning a person or a group of people is something that is necessary to human society. And I wanted to look at both the dangers and the risks of that, as well as why it happens and why people necessarily feel they have to do it. And also how we can kind of marry the goods that come from that kind of a process to our better natures while not diving too deeply into the excesses of it. And I wanted to have that idea in the story without being too explicit about it and without coming heavily down on any one side. I wanted to tell a story that just provoked thought about it. So I deliberately took that one word and I recontextualized it to ch hopefully challenge the audience to think about it and what that process was and how it could go awry and how it can function simply through reframing that one word. So you can do it, but you shouldn't do it a lot and you should be very deliberate and intentional and focused in how you do it. This shouldn't be a thing that happens throughout your entire story. Also, it should be more general than specific. The more specific a phrase becomes, like best two out of three being a great example, the more difficult that kind of recontextualization becomes until you're probably just gonna be safer making up your own terminology for that and leaving aside whatever you were originally thinking about repurposing. Anyway, prose is a very important part of how we communicate our ideas to other people. Fundamentally, every story is written down, whether it be in a script or in a book or published on a blog or tweeted out on Twitter. And our prose in these situations is what determines how all other people will understand us. So keep in mind the words you are using, the grammar you are using, the phraseology you are using, and control that prose to make yourself understood as best as possible. That's all I got for you today. Let me know what you think of prose down in the comments below using some of your best prose, and I'll talk to you later.